When I heard him at the Three Deuces, I said, my God almighty, what that man is doing. When he played his run, he'd be a B flat, an A flat, and a G flat. And the next note would be a D. Now the thumb glissed across, played a D and a C, and then he was back to his B flat again. And he goes, little, 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 and he's going down, and he's playing that run, and he plays flat hand piano. So he's not playing this way, he's playing down like this. So no matter how close you look at art, the hand looks almost motionless. So you just hear, and you're hearing a million notes, and his hands aren't moving at all. They just went from here to there. The one thing you will know is when he goes, dink, and he goes up and hits that note, and he goes, boom. That you will notice. Or if he reaches for his handkerchief and he's making a gigantic run, right? Those things. The father of stride piano was, in most pianists' judgment, James P. Johnson. And he was the one who made the leap from what had been Scott Joplin's ragtime into something entirely different. And this became what has since been called stride piano. The left hand was lengthened. The stride physically was greater. And often contain a counter melody in the bass notes to something else, for example. People like James P. and uh, others, uh, Willie the Lion, certainly uh, exemplified that sound. They were the transitional players, and of course then Fats Waller came along and then Tatum, because you hear a lot of Fats Waller stride in Tatum's stride. This is one of Fats Wallace's compositions you might recognize. Me. to it, it became less deliberate, less obvious, more flowing still, and began to uh, take on dimensions in the right hand, which were uh, something uh, that hadn't been heard much before. If he were to be playing that same eight misbehaving, well, it would come out more like, like this. There's no place that my father club that Art Tatum worked that my father would come in and he wouldn't ask my father to play and vice versa. 
there's no place that my father be working. He'd see Art Tatum come in the club. Yeah, he couldn't play. One time in the club, he said, when Art Tatum came in the club, he said, God's in the house. So he had a whole lot of respect for him. Tiny Grimes, the guitar player that, that played with my father and Art Tatum, told me that they were the two greatest jazz piano players that ever lived. My father and Art Tatum. That was the roost to come from in those days. The striped piano players, they were piano players that played the entire orchestra because they had been playing in places like where, in ball, not ballrooms, but they playing in, in uh, apartment houses where they, you go buy a house flats in Chicago was loaded with that. And you have a flat where the guys come by after hours and you can buy some food and meet some nice ladies and sit around the dining room and eat and drink and have a lovely time. And he had a piano player in the corner. So he had to play the whole bit. There wasn't, there wasn't room for a clarinet or a saxophone or a bass. So he 